Hello and welcome to episode 57 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show, featured on YouTube and podcasts with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we will be talking about we are in a multi-cloud world in which organizations can freely shift workloads and data among cloud providers to get the best combination of services, cost and performance, at least in theory. But frontline companies that are struggling to reduce the dependence of applications on underlying cloud platforms. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, and this is a problem I've been working on for the last year, so this is interesting. I was actually interviewed for this article, and I think um, my post on InfoWorld was the inspiration for it. So, interested in uh, talking about this. It's it's, uh, it's really a, uh, you know, something we're going to be facing this year and next. Yeah, it truly is. In fact, I think we we touched on it uh, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? And I think you've coined the phrase uh, "cloud complexity management" or something, right? Right. Yeah, so look, you know, an opening question then is, do you think that C-Level should understand the complexity of a multi-cloud environment, Dave? Yeah, I think they should be uh, asking the questions because they're responsible for the company. And so ultimately, um, you know, this is something that could run the company into the ground if IT doesn't, you know, take some precautions to make sure they don't bury themselves with the complexity of it. So multi-cloud is in, in vogue and people want to leverage, you know, um, more than one cloud, which is fine. It's best to breed technology. We can mix and match software services and cloud services, and we can mix and match storage and database and compute and you know all that stuff, and even have clouds work together to be make composite applications. And you know, lots of good reasons that multi-cloud is, is leveraged, but the, the problem is we are gonna hit a tipping point in complexity where we just have so many endpoints out there, so many databases, so many storage systems, so many compute systems that we just can't run it via humans. And we just don't have the ability to do it. And we saw this back in the SOA days, you know, we'd hit about, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 service, services under management and that service-oriented architecture, and it would just fall down because we didn't have the amount of people to understand how the services need to be doled out, how to update them, you know, things like that. We're going to find very similar kind of patterns with the cloud. And however, we're not just talking about simple services that do things like update a database. You know, we're talking about whole storage systems and very, very coarse-grained things we're going to have to deal with. So what do we do? So ultimately, uh, there's some companies that are taking action. The fact they're limiting the number of clouds that can be used and therefore the number of services that are there. Uh, that's all well and good, but you know that's going to limit also the capabilities of you building those systems because you're not giving people in the company the best of breed technology to build best of breed applications and systems. And you're dealing with you know, DevOps and developers. And they're going to find services wherever they, they, they exist and basically leverage them. So you may have you know 20 clouds when you look at these um, you know, different, you know, specific purpose-built clouds that are out there as well as some of the big cloud providers like the big three. And then also the ability to deal with security and the ability to deal with governance and the ability to kind of put a security uh, veil on top of everything and make it systemic to all the basic cloud environments. It, it's going to be a huge challenge. So ultimately, you know, like I said, organizations are limiting use of clouds or they're basically putting their foot down. But for the most part, I think they're really going to be you know, swimming against the tide and ultimately they're going to have to open up to additional cloud providers. So my assertion is that you're going to, you might as well figure out it's going to be a complex world to so figure out how to manage it. And that doesn't mean throw technology at it, but, you know, figure out approaches, figure out ways in which you can have, you know, very viable modernized databases, figure out ways in which you can have very viable and modernized governance systems, you know, down to the API levels, all these things which allow you to abstract yourselves away from the complexity. And that's, you know, really the only answer that I see, you know, other than just limiting the capabilities. It's like, you know, we, you know, built a car that goes, uh, you know, 190 miles an hour. We only want it to go five because uh, we're afraid of the danger. And, and I think that then there's no reason to have a car, uh, build a car that goes under 90, 90 miles an hour. And the same thing with cloud. So we need to use the capabilities of cloud computing. We need to make them work and play with our existing legacy infrastructure. And we need to figure out better ways and better approaches to make this happen. So that's cloud complexity management, and that's going to be our big focus, I think, for the next three, four years. Yeah, some very good points raised, Dave, and I think you're absolutely spot on with all of that. Absolutely, and in fact, you know, there's actually been a, a survey done by um, RightScale recently that I think about 81% of enterprises are currently, you know, pursuing that that multi-cloud environment. So. 
it's something that, you know, it's like a web of entanglement. Like you say, you've got so many different people focused on so many solutions, so many applications, so many projects that they, they have on, on go at once that if the C-suites aren't, you know, on top of that and we haven't got a clear directive of why we're using things and what we're trying to get at, the, the outputs of, of using those uh, from a clear perspective from the sea level, we've got chaos, haven't we? Yeah, we do. And I'm actually providing this message to business level magazines as well, you know, so that people in the C-suites can get the message and start, you know, asking the questions. I don't think IT is asking the questions yet because I don't think they see the problem yet. Uh, when they do start seeing the problem, I think it's going to be too late. Um, you know, we've we've done this before, by the way. We've, you know, created layers and layers of architecture through our Managed by Magazine, you know, management concepts. Where we just kind of, you know, grab the next shiny thing and you know, stick it in the enterprise and it kind of makes something that's very complex and static and difficult to change. And now in essence, we're moving to the cloud because that hasn't worked out very well for us. Um, now we have a cheaper commoditized stuff as we move into the cloud, yet we're, you know, in essence, kind of making the same mistakes, uh, you know, same poor behavior. In fact, there's probably less planning going on today and less architecture, you know, as I'm working on cloud projects and it needs to be more to, in, in, to uh, ensure that you're, uh, you're able to get around some of these complexity issues. So going forward, you know, all I'm really asking is that you think through different layers. You think through the data. You think through the services. You think through the governance. You think through the security. Uh, you think through the applications. You think through all these sorts of things, and you figure out ways and approaches that you can use to manage these systems. That doesn't mean one tool or throwing tools at this thing is going to be the way in which it goes. I think that's that's not going to work. However, I do think if people kind of create an approach and they create a framework and they create a category of these various systems, they create some kind of an organizational plan, they create some, some kind of an ops plan, security plan, governance plan, how these things kind of fit together and how they're going to work well going forward. And, and the big thing is how they're going to be able to scale. You know, if we go from, you know, 100, you know, uh, 1,500 cloud services to 3,000 cloud services in two years, and that's going to be not hard for most of these enterprises that are getting into cloud. Now, how is that going to work? You know, what's the modeling of making that happen? And by the way, you don't have an unlimited budget, so that's where a lot of organizations are going to fall by the wayside. Same number of people, same amount of money they have to spend. They can't, you know, start over hiring, you know, based on the fact that they're making complexity mistakes and leveraging cloud. I mean, the C-suites won't allow it, and they shouldn't. The investors shouldn't allow it. So this takes some thought, and we really need to think through this. We are going to talk about some inviability of multi-cloud uh, and some of this complexity in the next two years, we're going to see some pushback on it. And normally it's a normal PR problem that occurs when, you know, people like doing ERP upgrades and service-oriented architecture is dead kind of thing. Uh, we have a bit of a hangover for it, but this is a hangover I see coming. But, you know, this is something that's completely avoidable. If you do a little planning, you do a little thinking, you do a little, uh, you do a little uh, spending up some money, which is a tough thing to do, to make sure you have the skills, talent, the planning in place to make sure you're gonna avoid the complexity issue. And by the way, just shutting down and stifling growth uh, is gonna be the way to go. Uh, this is gonna be, you're gonna to have to operate within the growth cycle. And if you're gonna operate within the growth cycle, you're gonna to have to figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah, very true. In fact, this is, this is it almost complements what, what you said, um, I don't know, it was about a few weeks ago or something about, we're gonna be looking at a, a cloud um, computing officer someone who's specific around you know, managing some sort of multi-cloud environment that's going to be you know, working on the CIO, the CTO, and the CEO, obviously, because they're getting more involved with identifying, understanding how the, the functionality of the business is working because everything's so dependent on the uh, flexibility and the dynamics of, of, of cloud within a, a budgetary environment as well and, and how that reflects the, the shareholders, isn't it? Yeah, and we have those people today. I mean, uh, centers of excellence are you know probably the the closest thing to that role, and there are those roles that are starting to pop up in different organizations. Uh, the problem is that they're they're just focused on migration to the cloud. You know, you talk to those people. You know, I'm at I'm at a cloud uh, a cloud gathering. Um, you know, here in Vegas for the next couple of days, and when I talk to people tonight, when I go to this go to this get together, it's all going to be on migrating to the cloud. It's all going to be on database transformation, things like that. They're not going to talk about complexity and ops and management and integration with DevOps. And I think that's because they're in essence uh, not thinking about that and also they're probably not incentivized uh, to think like that. So in other words, the C-suites are incentivizing them to move quickly into the cloud and go ahead and get migrated into the system. They're not incentivized to do with ops complexity, which is what I'm talking about here. 
and they'll find out too late. And it's just really something that you know has to be uh, you know has to be thought through. Um, and I understand I'm the designated buzzkill that everybody's you know having a party and moving in this direction. But what I'm here to, to say, it's a small part of your budget, a small part of your um, effort that has to go into thinking through this to solve this issue proactively. And by the time you get out there and you hit that complexity tipping point, it's going to be too late. You can't retroactively suddenly hire lots of people and fix lots of problems. Things are going to go wrong quick and you're, it's going to be very difficult for you to recover. Well, on that very positive note that you've just, <laughs> just shared with Jim us. Gloom. <laughs> Sky's falling. Some chicken just, littling, huh? Just stop yeah. now. Just stop stop with cloud, everyone. Let's just go back. Just get every keep everything in house. Don't worry about the cloud. It's moving away. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Look, it, it moves us on nicely to your top top three tips. I think you've covered some some more than your top three tips already this week. But if you have any more top three tips, we'd love to hear them, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, first and foremost, you need to understand the cost of complexity. And I think that's the more compelling thing. So if you're a C-suite person, this is going to cost you money. Um, so you're going to see your cost of IT uh, um, balloon up uh, to astronomical levels as soon as you hit that complexity tipping point. You need to figure out and model what that is. I've done that a few times. It's scary. Uh, however, it's good knowing where it is, and so you can avoid it. it doesn't Just because you're modeling some sort of a cost inflection doesn't mean you're going to hit the cost inflection if you take a corrective action uh, to proactively kind of avoid it. Uh, you need to understand the process in place for how you deal with complexity. So, you know, I suggested, you know, that we deal with the fundamentals. And so it's data, it's security, governance, things like that. You need to go at each one of those levels and make sure you're doing what you can to reduce the complexity, increase the ops management, abstract yourself away from the complexity. So when you do get to the tipping point, it's going to be no big deal. You're able to zoom right by it because you're not necessarily bound to dealing with every single detail within that particular layer. Security, governance, database, process, services, things like that. And then you need to understand ops. I think that cloud ops is probably the single most important thing that we're not paying attention to right now. And so going forward, people have to operate these systems. And you know, me building systems and migrating systems, you know, which I did for a living for the last five years and still doing today, that just means I'm able to take an instance of success. I'm able to turn it over and it works. And, you know, everybody high fives each other and I move down the block. And the reality is the poor people who have to figure out how to operate that thing in a proactive and meaningful way and deal with this increasing complexity is where the, the problem's initially gonna be understood. And so people need to think about how operations needs to occur. Cloud ops is a very important part of the process. You need to be able to figure out that process, the tools, the technology, the skill sets, so you can scale past the complexity. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks for being part of the C-Suite Show. And uh, yeah, it's been a great week, isn't it? It's always a pleasure. The sky is falling. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Okay. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you appreciate that. Sorry about Dave's doom and gloom this week. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine. We've got the training show to record shortly, so uh, we'll pick it up a notch. But you can find David and his optimism on Twitter, uh, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Um, you know, remember to like, subscribe and share these uh, videos on this channel with your friends and your colleagues. Uh, for all things cloud tech and, and things moving forward. David writes some great blogs as well. All the links are in the description box below, so check those out. Um, you can find all the social media links as there, uh, there as well for LinkedIn and, uh, and, and all those other cool places. So thanks for watching and until next week.